So we'll say goodbye to George here. We thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a whole lot. Hopefully we were able to give a lot of tips, a lot of advice as you watched, and we're able to provide a lot of context of things. We really look forward. Don't be intimidated if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Just go and have some fun. Learn a whole lot about AimLab. It's free. Can't really beat free when you can add a free giraffe named George. We appreciate you guys for watching. We look forward to seeing you guys all next time. Hello and welcome to AimLab. Today we're going to cover quite a bit. If you're a beginner, if you're intermediate, advanced, we welcome you because today we're going to review some of the Creator Studio's features such as various maps such as Bind or Valhaven. We're going to discuss the custom weapons in the Creator Studio, some of the smart bots. We're going to enjoy a lot of the tasks. We're going to go through them together. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of what you can learn. We're going to review some of the crosshair outlines. We're going to build a flicking task within the Creator Studio, and we're even going to build a tracking task. And don't worry why all of this is going to feel very overwhelming at first. We're going to take it slow. We're going to enjoy the journey together. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced user, because today we're going to break down everything with an aim lab that I discussed and make sure that this takes you on a healthy journey as you look to improve your aim. Now remember some of the biggest things, let's go ahead and add a few of these scenarios. We're going to start with some of the fun stuff first. We're going to start with the scenarios. Remember that even if you go to a gym, I'm going to relate this heavily towards being and working out in a gym, maybe you're one of the fastest runners in the world. Maybe perhaps you can lift the most. A lot of these scenarios you will find perhaps you are one of the fastest runners. Maybe you're just one of the fastest at flicking. But maybe you don't have the speed to really back it up. Maybe you, you need to work on that. Maybe you work on your precision. Maybe you need to work. Overall, your goal is to improve your mouse control. And the plus side, even with AimLab, is that you can utilize controller functionality. So let's start with some of these scenarios. Let's go with Sphere Track 90, Arc Track, Star Track, Micro Start Track, as well as Reactive Track. So I have all these. We're going to cover every single one of them and go really in-depth. And we're going to do this without doing multiple takes. You're going to see just raw aim and everything that we're going to discuss with it. Let's start start with Sphere Track 90. I really enjoy a lot of these new scenarios, and I've put a lot of time into them so far. They're a whole lot of fun and enjoyable. Remember, even with your settings, as you hop into Aim Lab, as you can tell, you can go to your options and change your crosshair that we mentioned before. You can change the opacity so you get more of a little bit of an outline there. You can change the length of it. You can make it a little smaller, kind of like what you see on Valorant or CSGO, you can change the th thickness if you like. Right now we kind of have that little bit of a healthy medium in the cross here. I'm going to save that. If we go back to the screen here, just know that you have a lot of functionality at your disposal. So in this first scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply just start tracking and then we're going to break down everything that we saw here. I'll do my best to kind of talk throughout some of the scenarios. Some of them we'll just kind of let run, see what mistakes we make. And then we'll break down everything. As we continue onwards, we'll break down the specific scenario first and kind of talk in depth. I really wanted to get us first right into the nitty gritty of Aim Lab because there's so much here to break down. Scenarios will last a predetermined amount of time. So this is your first time on Aim Lab. You can see here as we're tracking something within our 90 degree peripheral. You don't have to hold mouse one. All you're going to do is simply track. And sometimes you'll have better days than others. And even while talking is a great exercise. As we're talking now, talking can be very important, especially when you're calming in a video game. So maybe you might have a friend next to you where you can have some calming and communication. So right there we got top placement, which is not half bad considering we were talking through it. Uh, we can definitely work to improve and everything that we're doing. Because talking can definitely make it a lot more of a struggle, and you'll continue to get better and better as you do this. So what you saw there was Sphere Track 90 Ultimate, which is perfect for scenarios where you're tracking individuals right in front of you. Maybe it's like Apex Legends, Quake, or various games where the target seems to be floating, whether it's Horizon popping your Q, maybe you're in Quake and you're you know doing your rocket jumps and kind of bouncing around. Sphere Track 90 Ultimate is going to be a fantastic scenario to getting you comfortable within the 90 degree surface right in front of you. This may be something that you might not be useful. Let's say if you're playing CSGO or perhaps if you're playing Rainbow Six Siege, you may not be used to that full range of motion, specifically where targets, you've been very much taught in CSGO or Rainbow Six Siege, that you do not need to move above head level 
Well, in certain games, you might need to expand upon that. Sphere Track 90 will get used to those that muscle control. And even as we saw there, we got used to it. I put mine on practice quite a bit. I don't log a ton of my scores. So this, while this says third play of this task, if you don't, if you feel really nervous about getting on the leaderboard, you probably saw it before, but don't be shy. You can always click on it and avoid putting this task on the leaderboard. And of course, maybe there's scenarios that you may play less. I know there's quite a few that'll play less, but I one of them that's coming up is one of my favorites. I think I have over 50 attempts on that I really, really enjoy specifically just because it really hones in on my aim. So let's go to the next task here. Arc track is a fantastic scenario where individual players in front of you will arc. And this is really, really helpful to improving and stabilize your aim because most targets are not going to just hover left and right strafes. And let's just go ahead and showcase that for all of you guys here. So what you want to do is work to keep your hand as stable as possible. And if you have any sort of jittering, all it means is perhaps you're not warmed up. And it's why you do the scenario. You'll have moments of brilliance as you're tracking, as you're really kind of hitting your groove. And you'll have moments where you may not be as on point. Not a bad run. We look at the breakdown on the leaderboards. If I put in just a little bit of time, it would easily break a top 100 score on this. Not one I definitely focus on. It, now that I play it, <laughs> I kind of feel like I might need to put a little more time and effort into this one compared to the micro track one. Let's do that one. I know that one I have an easy top 100 on, but arc track is very beneficial towards your aim to helping smooth out the arc that you have with your with your aim. So it's not just left and right, up and down, but realizing that individual characters or players when they're jumping in front of you do have an arc to their overall movement. So let's go on into the next task here. Start track is fantastic for getting used to a nice stable movement bouncing left and right. You'll see the points bounce left and right. This is a really fun one. I really enjoy this scenario. This is great for beginners when you're trying to create mouse stability from various areas. not a bad run so tips and advice as you're working on this and again that was almost a top 100 score right there even another one I really enjoy I know I've broken a top 100 before I think I was probably did under practice one of the biggest things here I'm actually u utilizing a new sensitivity don't be afraid to practice and utilize a new sensitivity if you need it it can be extremely beneficial to utilize a new sensitivity and realize okay maybe I need to go a little faster and go a little slower in today's exercise, I'm utilizing a new one, which my sensitivity is 15.5 inches per 360 compared to where I was at. I think it was 13.42 so. But what I like about this sensitivity is that, as you can tell, it provides a lot of smoothness to my aim. I just need to kind of work on the overall larger movements. And exercise is very important. That's actually a little case study that I have been doing, especially with these scenarios. Make sure you focus on clearing your mind 
having positive mental health when you come into practice, just very much as when you would work out and train, it's time to kind of get your body right into shape. So you want to be in the right mental mindset. And you also want to make sure that you're keeping your body in tip top shape. Because while this is a, a video game, it all also stresses your mind and stresses your body and you have to make sure that you're taking very much care of what you're doing. So let's do the next scenario here. This one is micro start track, one of my favorites. I really enjoy this scenario. Micro movements and before it starts, let's discuss it. This is great for controlling recoil, making sure you understand the small movements from bouncing back and forth. It just gets you used to micro adjustments and it's a very vital scenario that was not here it's one of the newer ones but i have found that it's really great for apex legends controlling recoil and getting used to smoothing out your aim and realizing how much or little that you need to move so let's go ahead and start the scenario Pretty good run. Let's see what we set on the leaderboard before. So we were a little bit shy of our prior score, but when you look at the leaderboard, it's important to look. So this is going to be an exercise if you look. What did we do before? We had 83% on screen tracking, so we're about 3% off from the normal tracking, which isn't bad. So utilize some of your scores, some of your prior history, and even look on the leaderboards to see how people are doing with their time on and time off. So if I look in the average time on and time off, I'll see where, where I excelled and maybe where I didn't excel as much. This is a really fun scenario, and then you can even go to insights and see where your strengths and weaknesses are, which is very beneficial. What I have done for today, and this is another tip when we go into the next scenario here, I actually have changed my FOV. I know most people would kind of go into this trying to put their best settings, but I really kind of wanted this to feel very raw just so you understood that not everyone's perfect and of course everything you're working on is towards a common goal I actually set this to my normal apex FOV which is at 110 field of view and graphic settings I set set to a 16 by 10 aspect ratio so let's say you are a professional or working to become a professional CSGO player or let's say you play at a different aspect ratio you can change that so that then you feel a lot more comfortable now, if you are having difficulty tracking, you can change the FOV to get much closer so you can see the target so you're not as far away. Or perhaps you're having maybe issues understanding the scaling and the flick distance. You can change the field of view so you get a different perspective and angle. This is positive to do just to kind of get you perspective. Remember that field of view is all about just changing your lens. If you compare it to, let's say, a camera. If you're using a camera lens and you zoom in with it, well, that changes the field of view and you zoom out with it. The camera isn't changing. It still requires the same distance, but it's definitely a very helpful trick. So in this one that we're about to do, I might hit reset here so we can take a look at it. This one is a reactive one. I, I really like the scenario for, for reactive. I'm going to restart it so we can talk about it a little bit more in depth as well. The reactive one is really beneficial in terms of making sure that you're flicking to right back onto the target. It's a, it's a rather large target, as you saw there. But that's not a bad thing because really the focus is to make sure that you're flicking back and forth and reacting appropriately. This one will definitely vary depending on the time of day and make sure that you exercise, eating right, all of those things will come into effect as you work on the reactive change of what you're tracking.
Now, what's interesting is that you'll have more success with a faster sensitivity. And the reason why I'm logging most of my scores, usually to take the edge off, like I mentioned, you can set it to practice if you like, so you don't feel the pressure of like, oh, I'm logging on the leaderboard. I know that can be a little intimidating for some, but once you see on the leaderboard, okay, you got yourself a high score, you can take a look and compare yourself to how you're doing with others. And, you know, not an overall bad performance just for doing these all back to back. I would say how much time you need to spend on these scenarios would vary depending on your overall goals. It's kind of like when you're working out at a gym, right? You need to compare and ask yourself, how much time do I need to spend to really achieve the results I'm looking for? I always recommend somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes. Each of these scenarios takes about a minute apiece. So we have five here. These are the new tracking scenarios. And just kind of recap the ones that we've already looked at. You're, you're looking at Sphere Track 90, Arc Track, Star Track, Micro Start Track, and Reactive Track. So we got a lot here. And these are all one minute apiece. And if you did them all three, you know, a total of three times, and that would equate to a total of 15 minutes. And at that point, when you hop in game, you should feel quite warm up, warmed up and pretty positive as you hopped into your games. And that's really the whole point. And when you start to kind of work on certain movements. So if we look at these scenarios and we were to ask ourselves, which one did I struggle with? I almost want to say arc track was probably the one I struggled with the most. Micro star track, I think if I had a good day, that seemed to be a scenario that I, that I started taking more seriously in the leaderboards just because I was really popping off with it. And then because I changed my sensitivity, start track, excuse me, start track, probably one that yeah overall that i would just need to just spend a lot more time just because it, it again why it's called star track is as you can tell it kind of goes in a star shape and it's more linear I, I think overall that was probably my weakest scenario so kind of assess and really reflect and be be critical of yourself but not too harsh because you know that you're you're working to improve and that's the overall goal so what we're going to go through next are the rainbow six siege scenarios what's really great about aim lab which i really enjoy is the variety that you see in a lot of the scenarios. It's not just grid shot. I know grid shot is very, very popular, but you can see a lot of improvement from switching things up, things you're not used to. Even if Rainbow Six Siege is not your main game, there is so much to learn in terms of accuracy and overall improvement. So in this scenario that you're looking at, this is where C4s get thrown at you periodically. This will help on your precision and accuracy to help you improve your aim. Let's say you don't even play Rainbow Six Siege. There's a lot of applications for this, whether you're shooting something that may be running towards you or just trying to make sure that you're accurate. You don't want it to blow up in front of you. And that's the overall well, exercise and goal. So if you miss, it's perfectly fine. You get more points if you hit it while it's in the air. Just the goal is for it to not to blow up. You can move your character in-game if you like. In this case, I'm going to have him stay still until I don't need to. Just kind of hold the angle. But if you want to throw yourself off, you can kind of jiggle peek left and right. Again, don't be turned off if you don't play Rainbow Six Siege because flicking to various small targets of various shapes at various angles can be very beneficial to improving your aim. Even if Rainbow Six Siege isn't even my main game, I, w I still actually thoroughly enjoy the scenario and definitely learned a lot from it. I always notice that I seem to be better when the targets are moving right to left rather than left to right so excuse me when they're going left to right i seem to excel more but if they're going right to left i struggled a bit more that's just my own assessment and you can also see from insights where you struggle the most if you were to do the scenario again definitely work on continuing to improve work on those flick shots try to have it flick and if you need to then you can move your character in the scenario if you like you don't need to you don't have to but you know it's always there as an option for you if you like and let's discuss what and i'm gonna switch to one of these that is really really cool we're starting to starting to hit some of the weak points with my aim you know tracking I, I kind of excel at and flicking from the battlefield days and even apex legends where we've hit masters we relook at siege entry this is a really interesting scenario because i don't have the most amount of csgo experience i spent thousands of hours in aim trainers you know sometimes let's say you don't have all the time in the world maybe that's why you're watching this video maybe that's why you're hopping into aim lab it's perfectly fine this is why we have these exercises and these utilities to help you improve 
this is very popular. You've probably seen a lot of YouTube scenarios where somebody will breach a building and kind of work their way in. So while this is labeled as Rainbow Six Siege, this is this is such a cool scenario. I really, really like this one. I think it taught it taught me the most so far. Also, there's one about memory where I was definitely struggling with. But of course, you move, and they shoot back if you take a little bit too long. So cutting corners and slicing the pie is very important. You've probably seen that a lot in Valorant as you cut, and you want to stop your movement and take your shot. And with this scenario, you want to keep moving as fast as possible and as you continue to improve you start to maximize on your movement and get faster and faster and it's okay if you struggle a little bit that's the whole point there's only so many areas that an enemy can be I, I understand this from Apex Legends so if you if you're not used to the overall map and you don't know where all the targets are that's perfectly fine and talking when you do scenarios, like I mentioned, it's not always the easiest thing. Sometimes that's why you hear people so quiet. You got to watch your back in various angles. That's why I got hit here. It's a good example of not knowing where enemies are. But remember, whenever you enter the room, there's only so many locations that they're going to be at. It's called slicing the pie, and this is such a great demonstration. In fact, it makes me it inspires me to make my own YouTube video on this specifically, just because it's so. It's it's honestly a lot. Of, I can see myself popping in music and enjoying the scenario just endlessly. And you can hold shift to start to run a bit more. The goal is to keep, and we're gonna do this one again as we get a little faster. I breached incorrectly there, so cutting cutting the angle and slicing the pie. Slicing the pie. You know, and I'm I'm gonna do the scenario again with you guys and really talk through it. So slicing the pie is whenever you cut an angle. Think of your think of your field of view like a pie, like right in front of you. If you can just imagine that for me, and as you cut it. Think of this as like a like a pie, and you keep going a little more degree, a little more degree, and you cut the pie. And remember your hitbox when you go up and down, it's super small. So as you keep moving through, and this this incorporates everything that you've learned in terms of your overall aim and accuracy. Like you can understand the concept, but as you keep doing it, you need to learn and continue to get better and better and better, so you know where enemies are at. So if we breach again, I'm gonna restart the scenario and talk to this. This is this is just so. It's awesome that Aimline put this in. I think this is fantastic, and it really, really teaches. So if you, there's only so many areas that an enemy can be, and, and if you don't stand still, then you don't get the shot. So remember, if you know an enemy could be here, and you cut the angles, knowing where they're most likely going to be at, you start. To, it starts to rely less on aim and more on predicting an enemy and where they're going to be. Prediction is really key, and so let's restart this and let's just try to zip through this as quick as possible so you can see the whole thing. The goal is to keep running through the map as fast as possible, and these enemies are predetermined, but if you get so used to cutting the angles... and going through various motions, you start to really speed up. Even as you see me going through this, because I know where the enemies are, you really start to speed up your overall aim and your overall accuracy and of course they punish you and shoot you back if you take a little too long which we did in that scenario just remember to keep peeking go through this as quick as possible And it's pretty straightforward where you need to go. There's areas that I need to check. I need to get better about checking. Too much Apex Legends, everyone always around you. You need to play a lot smarter. But this is this is why we do this. This is this is literally why we do this. Where you're not looking at somebody who's perfect. Where I've had I have a lot of strengths, but I also have a lot of weaknesses, and that's perfectly fine. If I stood there actually in game, I definitely would have been dead. But we learn, right? We get better. You try to do this on a timer. I know CSGO has a ton of these back in the day. But I what I like about the fact that it lives in AimLab is that you can change your sensitivity and it feels just a lot more universal. So the application makes a whole lot more sense. I 
and then you're right back at the start. And you just kind of rush right through again. So this says a high score. I know I always put all these in. Let's see, what is the average score that we see on this? For Siege Entry, I don't think I was able to get this on the leaderboard, but can always continue to do better and keep rinsing and repeating. And if we did it one more time, I just kind of want to do it one more time for exercise sake. This is, this is such a good one. And when we go into the Creator Studio, this is going to be a good segue to everything that we talk about from the Creator Studio standpoint. It's kind of why I'm spending a little bit more time on it, and I feel like it's one of my weaknesses. So it, when I'm just kind of generally enjoying kind of going through this, this, this is where you find your passion and where you find things that you need to work on because you're keeping your crosshairs at head level as well as you're doing this, which is great. I don't know why this hall always trips me up as if there's going to be three there. It's okay if you're not perfect. Remember that as you're doing this. Even if you're super good, try to beat this score. Try to hop in. Try to do better. Try to be better. That's the overall goal. As long as you're motivated and hop in and you want to be better, then... I feel like I did inspire somebody today. Remember, enemies are always going to be in the strangest spots. Trust me, playing Apex Legends, people are always in the weirdest spots. But they start to become predictable over time, and that's part of the magic of things. If you start to kind of think outside the box of where enemies could or could not be, then you've done half of the work, right? And this applies to various games. So it, it, just think of this as opening your mind and thinking a little bit more broad on where enemies can place themselves. So we've, we've already done better. That's already better. Just imagine if we did this for another, let's say, 30 minutes, how much I would improve and how much this would translate in-game. I'm, I'm probably, after I, I finish this, this big video, I'm probably going to spend the next couple hours on this. That was a whole lot of fun. I know that might seem lame, but pop in some music, enjoy yourself, find that point of zen, and start to really grind these out. You can be one of the best aimers in the world. I've seen some people who are cracked out of their mind with some of the best aim in the world, but you, when they apply different things such as movement, such as memory, which is the next one, you're going to see me really slip up. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be very interesting, but that's why we do these things. Like, you know what? Let's let's go with something a little easier. Let's do the uh, audio version where you hear the, the audio, the spatial audio. This is really good at whenever you try to decipher where audio is. I'm going to give you a guide to this one. This one's going to be very beneficial to really help you out. Because there's two types of audio that you'll hear. When it sounds a little closer, it almost it's two clicks away. So this one's really close on the right, close on the left. A little louder. Kind of slipped a little louder. There we go. Left. Okay, let's do this one again. I'm going to reset. You really got to turn your headphones up. I'm going to turn my headphones up because I had them a little low. It's kind of hard for me to decipher. In terms of headsets, what you want to do is have one that has enough bass. This is why some pros will use headphones so they can kind of have the bass with it. I happen to be using a headset at the moment, but that's the reason why some pros will use headphones because it adds a bass so you can kind of hear the difference. The distance kind of helps in terms of bass and the treble, and it's a lot more dramatic. It's why when you utilize various peripherals, sometimes having a highlighted bass and treble, just being very dramatic is better for video games, but maybe not as good for a movie. Just as an example. 